Hi everyone, it's Matt Renna, and this is Module 7, Using Pivot Tables. Pivot Tables is really an extraordinary tool. Um, I remember the first time that I learned to use Pivot Tables. Uh, I had done data analysis, uh, and that took me five or six hours um, to, to, to do it, and um, when someone showed me how to do a Pivot Table, I think the five or six hours of work that I did was um, able to be done using a Pivot Table in a matter of minutes. So. That sort of sets, sets the say, stage um, to show, give you an idea of how useful um, a pivot table can be. So what is a pivot table? A pivot table really is a tool that allows you to take a lot of data, um, and I have some data here that we're going to work on a pivot table, and allows you to manipulate da that data. And the reason it's called pivot table is sort of think of some data as a cube or something pivoting and being able to see it in different directions in different ways. And that's really what a pivot table does. It takes your data and allows you to sort of manipulate it and see it in many different ways, very easy um, to do and, and alter. So let's cut, kind of get started on pivot tables to see what we can do. So I took um, some basic uh, data and I put in a table here. So as you can see, um, this is a uh, sort of a file that um, I put together representing a, a basic demographic uh, uh, employee data table on uh, our dental plan. Uh, this is not specific data, so I just made up this information. Um, but what you can see here is member number, last name, first name, relationship, birth date, age, uh, and also uh, the plan that they're in. Okay, so now you can see there's only about 30 lines of data here, so it's not a lot, but again, imagine you're doing this for you know, thousands of lines of data. So the first thing you do in a pivot table is you want to make sure that you highlight um, your entire data field. What's really key to a pivot table is ensuring that there is a title and you include the title when you block the data and you need to have a unique title in each of the columns that you have. And in this case, that that, that is the case. So let's highlight um, all our data. All right, and now we're going to go to data excuse me, insert, pivot table, pivot table, okay? It's going to start sort of this create pivot table wizard. So the first question is the, the range, okay, which we already highlighted. You can see by doing so it automatically plopped it into there. If you didn't do it, you'd have an opportunity to sort of do that. So um, I let, again, best practice, highlight it first, it'll automatically put it there. Uh, next thing is, do you want this pivot table to be in a new new worksheet or in the existing one? Sometimes I do use existing. Most of the time I do new worksheet. Um, and it's a lot easier to sort of keep the pivot table in a separate worksheet. So I'm going to go ahead and say new, new worksheet and hit OK. So now you can see we've got a pivot table with no sort of data. And um, here is our pivot table field list. And you can see this is all the column headers that were there. Um, and down here is where we're going to start uh, entering some data and manipulating. So let's, let's go back to the pivot table data just so we can see it had name, there was a relationship, and there was two types of fields here, spouse or child, birth date, and then there was an age and then the plan. So here's what you can do with a pivot table. Let's, let's start um, sort of simple and say, how many people do we have in the plans that we offer? All right, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the field plan, and I'm going to put that down here in this row label and see what happens. So now you can see that it's taken the plans. In this case, there's only two, and it has put them on the left side, um, and so far that's all we have. All right, so the question now is, is um, how many people do we have in each of the plan? I'm going to take the plan. Now I'm going to put into this field called values. Okay, and by doing that, it automatically made it a count. And you can see now that it automatically calculated that there are nine people in the DHMO and there are 21 people in this PPL plan. All right. Now, you can do other things. It automatically did count, but if you drop on this triangle here and go to value field settings, you can see that it gives you different options average, min, max. Let's hold off on that a second. We'll use that in a moment. Okay. Um, let's say now we want to say, well, how many people are each in these plans? And we also want to know within each of these plans, how many are spouses and how many are 
uh, children. So I'm going to take the relationship now and I'm going to put it on the column side. And now what you'll see is on the top, the co this is the column section, this is your row section. It is now split. There's still my, my grand totals. But you can see that now it has calculated the, the number of children in the plan and also um, the number of spouses that add up to the nine. Okay, so what you can do here, I'm going to flip these two. I'm going to put the plan up here, relationship down here, and the data is still the same. I'm just showing it differently. Now I've got m my plans to the, on top and the relationship on the left side. The reason I wanted to show you that is, remember this is a pivot table. We can manipulate data um, in different ways. All right, so let's for a moment um, take out both of these. Okay, and let's put uh, the plan back on the left side. Okay, so now the next question is what is the average age of participants in these two plans? So now I can take age and I can throw it into this value section. Okay, now you can see Excel automatically made that a sum. I don't want that. So let's go to value field settings, change that to an average, go to number format number. I only want to use one decimal place. So I hit OK, OK again, and now you can see that the average age for these plans um, is 20.2 for this plan and then 21.4. Let's get rid of the um, the plan on the left side. Let's bring in relationship. Okay. It keeps the calculations. You didn't remove the calculations even though, though I removed the row label. And now you can see this is how many children they are and the average age is 21. And there are seven spouses and the average age is also 21. That seems weird. And actually it's weird because I did something on purpose and I want to show you. So let's go back to our original data. Keep in mind that these numbers are about the same. Let's go to our original data and let's add a filter in here. Okay, so I added a filter, and let's look at the spouses. Actually, it happened to be sorted in that way, so we didn't really need to filter. But let's take a look at what's going on here um, with the calculations. These numbers don't look right. Somebody born in 74 is not 20 years old. So let's calculate, let's recalculate um, what someone's birth date is on uh, 2015. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is write... 1 1 2015 okay Excel automatically converts dates to numbers 42,005 is the number that represents January 1st 2015 okay so now in order for me to figure out this person's age on January 1st I'm gonna need that number 42,005 I'm gonna write a formula that says let's subtract 42,005 minus this person's birth date should have put a parentheses in there, and then divide it by 365 and a quarter. Because the first part of that calculation is just telling you how many days uh, the person's been alive since their birth date, but we need to convert it to years. So you can see it converted it, and it's about 40.1. I'm going to copy this all the way down, um, and you can see that these values changed. All right. Let's go back to our pivot table. Now, hmm, this hasn't changed. What we need to do is right click and hit refresh. And now by doing that, you can see that the number changed. Okay. The reason uh, I wanted to show this is one of the great features of the pivot table is its ability to recalculate on the fly. So as you not only manipulate your data, um, you can alter it in case there are some problems and it will automatically refresh that. If you add new columns, you refresh, you'll add the new columns, datas, um, will be seen on this side so uh, it's really useful in that respect now let's add plan and now let's throw it underneath relationship so you can see you can do multiple layers of data using um, a pivot table so now you can see of child there how many of them are in the plan in each of those two plans and, on, and in the spouse let's grab this and put it on top now we've broken it down by plan. And you can see the relationship is now below that. 
Okay. Um, so pivot tables are extraordinary at um, taking data and playing with it um, and changing it to the way that you need it done. So there's a lot of different ways you can do this. Now let's take um, age, throw it over into the value section. You can see it automatically did some. I don't want to do that. Let's go value field settings. And now let's look at, let's add the minimum and just go to number format. Okay, minimum, and then you can see we can also add age, throw it in there, okay, and I don't want some, value field settings, I'm going to go to max, and then hit number and make it one decimal point, okay, and hit okay. Now. Let's, let's see if we can get a little more space here. There we go. So now we have count, average, max, min. It's not really in the order that I'd want it. So I'm going to grab the min. I'm going to put it right there as my number two. Average in the middle is good and max at the end. So now you can see this is your minimum value. This is your average. This is your maximum. Um, and then you still have your count here. So there's a lot of different ways that you can show the data. You can manipulate it and move it. Um, pivot tables just take a lot of time to get comfortable and used to. But the great thing about them is you can't really mess with your data. You're not going to mess anything up. Play with it. Sort of put things in these fields to see what your output is going to be, um, and and you know get to what you want your data to look like. All right. Um, one other thing I did want to show under design. Okay. Um, what I usually like to do is I like to show my pivot table in what's called a, a tabular form. All right, and you can see how it's a little cleaner. It's a little easier to look at. Again, this is a personal preference, um, but you could see how instead of it kind of being right below it, it puts a nice clean total line and everything there. So that's one of the first things I always do is go to a report layout under the design um, and make it um, you know tabular. So um, you can get an idea of of, uh, of what that looks like. So play with the different designs. I mean, as you get more comfortable, I would focus on understanding, you know, how to put data into here to get your output. Um, but hopefully, this gives you an idea of how the pivot table works uh, and what you can do to use it to make your data more succinct and tell the story that you want it to tell.